Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions, Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the introduction presentation, Jesus introduces the Understanding God's Loving Laws Assistance Group, conducts a brief revision of what has been taught already in the series, and discusses why understanding God's laws is essential for an education in love. Recorded on the 4th of November 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. It takes us about uh, a minute to change over with groups because what we'll be doing is changing over the presentations as you'll see me doing here. And also Lena, who's also doing quite a lot of work behind the scenes there, she's changing over her tagging pro process as well, which takes around about a minute to do. So every group where we go straight from one to another, like this one, and there's a few of those. That there's actually, I think, about 12 of them through this uh, this course. You'll see me changing over to something on the screen. Lena will be changing over, and I'm, and I then patiently wait for Lena to, because she's got a lot more to do than I have, <laughs> uh, to change over hers and get hers ready. And once she's ready for tagging, and what the tagging is, is a, it enables us to chapterize these videos so that when you're watching them on YouTube or something else, you'll be able to, in the end, go and jump to specific areas that we th you, you want to jump to. And in fact, we'll also be, every one of your questions will be a chapter. So that means that you can jump specifically to the question you asked or whatever if you want to go back over your own questions as well. So that's the reason why we're doing it. It takes about a minute to change over, that's all. And then we're on into the next subject. Well, guys, it's great to see you. <laughs> so glad you could come. And, and I think you'll, you'll enjoy the program, actually. There's a, what, what, the reason why I'm so, uh, so much enjoying the process of, uh, and the prospect of teaching these things to you this week is because I've never had an opportunity to talk to a group of people on earth about most of this material. And I'm talking about first century and now. So, so, so this is wonderful. We, we talk about these things in the spirit world a lot, as you can imagine. And, uh, and anybody who's read the pageant messages will see there's mentioning of laws here and laws there. There's always, almost every pageant message says there's a law about this that controls that and there's a law about that that controls this and so forth. And, uh, and as a result of that, um, many of you would have seen that there must be a lot of laws and, and these celestial spirits must know a fair few of them for them to refer to them all the time. And, of course, this is why what we want to start it opening your mind and your heart to the concept of, opening your heart to the concept of God has loving laws and what, are, what is the structure of these laws? How does it all fit together and how does it affect you in the long run? How do all these things affect you? So what we're going to do now is, a, is an introduction to the whole of the week for you just so that you can firstly... Get, get to where we were up to you know, in terms of a review, but also so that we can mention a few basic things that I don't have to then cover tomorrow morning when I'm talking, giving you some fundamental facts about God's laws. So where were we? Where were we up to? Well, why are we even here is probably the first question we need to ask. Um, why are you here? You tell me. You don't know why you're here? That's a problem. That's a problem. Tristan, if we can go to Tristan, if you leave your hand up and straight behind you, the mic is, mate. To get any information, oh, sorry, stand. <laughs> yeah, got to, stand. Uh, to get any information I can to grow my relationship with God. Uh, so anything that I, that I can get to. Yes, good. So it's about relationship with God. What else is it about? If we go back to Amber up the back. Thank you. And on this side to Natalie. Um, the laws will give us like a real solid foundation to kind of build upon and when we understand. But a foundation in what, Amber? I sort of see this topic as like a framework. It is. And the base. But what's the base for? Getting at one with God. No, what's the base for? We're learning Becoming about Becoming more loving. 
Yeah, love is what we're here for, right? <laughs> that one. <laughs> yes, remember that. We're here yep. to learn about love. And this is what we need to remember. It's all about love. God's universe operates in love. We don't realise how much of that universe at this stage and how much it operates in love, and this is something we'll learn through the discussion, but the real reason why we're here is to gain this education, this education in love, isn't it? Now, is my mic just cutting out occasionally? Yeah. It is. So that's the problem. We're using new microphone systems that we're trialling, and, um, and we may have to scrap our trial if it's going to keep cutting out. We'll, we might change this to, over to might. So we might just put up with it for this talk, and then we might have to change things back. Oh, there I go again. Might have to change things back tomorrow, I think, back to our standard system. We have to scrap this system as a trial, unfortunately. All right, so every one of God's laws from the small, very smallest, controlling the smallest particle, right the way to the laws that control the soul, the very largest. I think we're cu I'm cutting out quite a lot now. When we're trialling new equipment, you know, sometimes it works in the studio really good and we don't have any trouble at all and then we bring it live in into an auditorium like this and because there's all this wi – these are actually based on digital systems. Uh, it's a Wi-Fi system and, and it mixes with all the other Wi-Fi that's going on in the room and they're outside the room and so forth and that's probably why it's starting. We're going to probably have to go back to our old system, unfortunately. We were hoping that the digital system would work better, but obviously not. All right, so we talked about those things. Obviously, makes a logical sense for us to get this education in love, doesn't it? And so far, we've covered a few things, haven't we, with regard to this education in love? So far? So let's have a bit of a review about that, about what, what we're covering. So we'll just skip to the review. The first thing is, what is God's definition of love? Now, many of you up to now have asked this question. You've basically said, well, you know, we've talked now for two groups. The first group, remember, was about use of our loving will. And the second group, remember, was about becoming our loving self. But we, and we've been talking about love. But one of the things that should have sort of struck you by now is that most of us don't really know what love is. And, and we don't really know how God sees love. And so, so when we talk about love, we're still coming very much from our own perspective and from our, and, and you could say, from our injured perspective of what love is or what love, what we imagine love to be. And, there, and this is a particular problem for us because while we hold on to our own definition or the world's definition of love, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to actually gain God's definition. But not only that, even if we get rid of the world's definition, we're just left with a sort of like blank slate. How, what do we know about God's definition? Not much. And, and how do we find out about what God's definition really is? And so this is what, where this group becomes very, very important to us because it's in this group that we start learning about how God defines love to be. And in fact, all of God's laws actually create a definition about love. They are the truth about love. And, and this is why it's so important to understand God's loving laws because the laws themselves define what love really is. And this, the beauty of having this examination is that it allows us then to actually see what's going on with regard to love. It allows us to understand love and see it as God sees it rather than as we imagine it to be. Now, for most humans, love is a very, um, very loosely defined, isn't it? It's like, you know, oh, I just love that person. And you say, well, uh, are you honest with them? No. <laughs> you know. do, 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 you, uh, do you do things to hurt them? Uh, yes. <laughs> Do you do things purposely hurt them? Yes, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> you know, because you get angry or whatever and you do these things. And then it's like, and, and do, you say, do you save them time in your relationship? No, 
in fact, I want their time, you know, like this is what they should give me their time. That's what makes me feel loved and cared for. Somebody sacrificing themselves for me and so forth. And when we start asking questions about what we do in loving, so-called loving relationships, you actually find out, actually, we do a lot of pretty disastrous things. And is it no wonder then that we end up with disastrous relationships? And also very difficult times in relationships as a result. Now, the way God intended relationships to be and the way God intended love to be was very different to that. So we need to examine what God intended. And one way we can find out what God intended is to examine the laws involved. So the definition, God's definition of love, very important part of this, of this presentation. Every law defines what God feels about love. And so the more we understand the laws, we more, the more we understand what love actually is. Right? And then we've got to consider, we, then we have a decision to make. Do I throw away my concept and accept God's concept? Or do I just try to stay with my concept and end up with what? A lot of, whoops, a lot of pain and suffering. <laughs> That's what we end up with, don't we? So let me just skip back. Um, so we need to release from ourselves our own definitions of love if we are going to finish up retaining God's don't we? So that's something we need to consider. So, so then if we cast our minds back to, this, to, our, to the very first program we did, which is the understanding. Can you remember what it was? Because I can't. No, I can. It's understanding our will. Yeah. So what, what about our will? Developing our will to love. Now, at this stage, I would say that the majority of you have yet to really embrace that program because there's still a lot of using the will to not love or there's still a lot of using the will just to get your addictions met or using your will just to feel happy and satisfied personally without much care about anybody else and how much you're loving them. So, so this pro, that part of the program, there's still work to do there, right? Isn't there with regard to the use of the will? And we'll learn in this presentation, we'll learn about will and desire and how the two go hand in hand. At this stage, you could say at the moment, for many of us, our will is engaged in a negative way or a very passive way. And our desire to love is still largely undeveloped, still largely not really being engaged by, by us, ourselves. So we need to learn those three things that we had to do. Remember, we had needed to analyse our will to love and change. We needed to face your resistance to love and change. And you needed to use your will to develop some faith. Use your will to live in harmony with truth, the desire for action, feel the emotions. That still needs to be done. Right, so that's what the first group talked about, didn't it? You remember that? Yep. Right, what was the second group? Well, can I ask you firstly a question about the first group? Can you see the question? How are you going with it? Uh, are you making choices right now? Are the very choices you made even to be here and the very choices you make while you're here and the very choices you make in your day-to-day -day life, are they demonstrating that you actually have a will to love or not? Good question, isn't it? Right. So are we really being sincere about that? Or are we just putting it off like we put everything off, hoping to be happy but never engaging the thing that's going to begin our path to happiness, which is our will? Changing, changing our will from... A place where we're just using our will as it currently is to get whatever we want out of life rather and changing our will instead to to love rather than do that. You know, is that what we're doing? But what was the second group now? We focused our attention in the second group on if we come down to die on here. Um, it was learning about developing my loving self. Yeah, 
There was a lot of good material there too, wasn't there? Don't you think? We, we, we analysed a lot of things there. So developing my loving self. We, we had to understand, remember, we did it in three phases, didn't we? The first phase was understanding your unloving self. We, we had to understand what makes us unloving before we can learn about what makes us loving. And then after that, we had to learn how to remove our unloving self. Remember, we spent a lot of time on that big diagram, remember? On addictions and fears and how we had global fears and we had some the individual fears and, and then how sin was sort of the stem of this great big tree that we had to unravel and desire to unravel. And what, what I notice is many of you are still desiring to sin and still desiring to live in that top section where you're still desiring to have your addictions met. You know, that's, that, that means will has yet to be, desire to change that has yet to be fully developed. Right? And then, of course, we even talked about that third area about like becoming your loving self like, and what your self was, like that we're only one half of ourselves even. And that would mean addressing and dealing with a lot of things that causes uh, us to oppose ever coming to know or experience or spend time with the other half of ourselves. So then we had some questions asked about that. Am I going to be my real self? For many of you, you're still trying so hard to be your facade self. Uh, haven't given that up yet. Don't want to be your real self. Real self might get into trouble. Best to protect that and get some... You know, be your facade instead. And you'll learn in this group actually that being your facade breaks so many laws and so many principles that it's something that you should give up as soon as you possibly can, not, not put it off for, for as long as you possibly can. And then there's that other question of am I going to have that relationship with God that Tristan mentioned at the beginning? Do I really want one? Because without you engaging or desiring a relationship with God, in the end, you're not going to be your complete loving self. It's impossible to even enter a union state with your other half without God being involved. So if God's not involved and you're choosing to not have God involved, then automatically you've stopped your ability to be your full, complete self, which is unfortunate. We make all these decisions that are very negative, have a very negative effect on us. So now we come to this group, this one that we're here, hoping to uh, learn something from about our education in love. And, and what are we going to learn? Well, hopefully we learn to un understand God's loving laws, right? That's hopefully what we're here for, to learn about that. But as you've seen from the notes that you've got already, it's a bit more involved than you possibly thought of, right? you notice that? Like, it's not like we're going to discuss five or ten laws and you got them down pat after that, is it? In fact, there's one comment that you'll see here tomorrow that will probably make you quite angry and upset, that there's more laws being created every moment than you have the capacity to talk about in that moment. So that, that's a, how are we going to understand God's loving laws if there's more laws being created every single moment than we can even talk about in any single moment? It's going to be, well, it's got to be some way of being able to understand these laws that enables us to understand large swathes or large groups of laws all at once. Otherwise, it's pretty much a pointless exercise. Right? And this is what we would like to discuss with you. And this is something that um, myself and Mary have been, been attempting to find out for years. Like when I say years, obviously the last 2,000 years, we've spent the majority of our time understanding law. And, and one of the reasons why we do that is because, I don't know, I don't know yourself, like creation is relatively easy, isn't it? Like the average person on the planet, you know, you can make a cake, can't you? That's creation. <laughs> you can cook some cookies. That's creation. You can like, you know, go out and build a fence. That's creation, isn't it? But you try making some laws that govern that creation. It's incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. And this is where we'll start to see how clever and amazing God is as a character or being, to be able to actually create laws that govern a creation 
is a very, very intricate and uh, something that has to be very well thought out and well planned. Uh, and this something we'll learn through this process of examining, of examination. But let's look at why. Well, firstly, obviously, God's laws are a statement of God's intentions. Now, that seem, might seem like a pretty basic comment, but it's actually a very important comment. If you, if you want to know what God wants to do, all you need to do is look at the laws God created because they tell you what God wants to do. They state God's intentions. God's intentions for humanity, God's intentions for you personally, God's intentions for all creation, God's intentions for the universe are all governed by laws. So the laws are a statement of God's intentions. This is a great way of finding out what God wants to do just by understanding the laws. You learn a lot about God through this process of understanding law. They are also... The law is educated us about, as we've already said, the definition of love. So, so now I'm starting to understand what God believes love is rather than just what I think love is or what I feel love is. So that's a great reason, isn't it, to look at the laws? Because now I can start to understand what love really is. Instead of just talking about love, you know, we say love this, love that, and there's songs about it, you know, love, love me do, and so forth. And, and we just go on about love all the time, don't we? Like on the, on the planet, most, loves, most songs are written about love, or usually it's about, you know, the loss of love or whatever, but, but still they're about that subject. And yet we really know very little, from God's perspective, very little about what love actually is. Now, many of us would describe love as a feeling, would we not? Feeling. But what is involved in that feeling? Most of us, when we start asking like, the real, what I'd classify as the drill down questions about what's involved, most of us wouldn't know what's really involved in the feeling. And so we start saying, oh, it's just a feeling you get. It's just a way you feel about somebody. And, and when you say, what do you mean? How do you feel about somebody? What, how is this love displayed? Oh, well, you know, you really want to be with them and, and you need to be with them and you need... And now you're starting to, to find an addiction. Like, that's not love from God's perspective, right? So straight away we're moving, you know, we start describing feelings and then we, we don't even know the feelings God has as a part of the flavour of love that God has. And instead what we're describing is our addictions that we have. Human, human concepts of what love really is. So this is a fantastic thing we need to learn to do. And the third, obviously, is that God's laws demonstrate where our pain and suffering comes from. So many of us will admit, and remember we said in the previous couple of groups that, look, there's a lot of pain and suffering, isn't there, going on on the planet, generally, personally, even. You know, even with sickness and illness and diseases and so forth, there's, that's a lot of pain and suffering happening. And yet, if we knew God's laws, we'd know the reason why pain and suffering is occurring. And we'd know what is in harmony with love and what's out of harmony with love and, and that what's out of harmony with love creates that pain and suffering. We'd know all those things. And this is why it's so important to understand. And we also... When we examine this, this, this issue of uh, why look at this law, law material, is that every assistance group from now on is going to refer to the laws. And the reason why is because not, not much real change can actually occur inside us as individuals unless we understand the laws we are breaking. Because every time we break a law, we create sin. Every time we create sin, as we learned in our previous group, we create pain and suffering. So obviously, the more we know about God's laws and how they're driven and what's, how they're defined and what love is from God's perspective, the less pain and suffering we will experience. So that in itself should be a reward enough, shouldn't it, to, to learn about God's laws? and understand them.
So what we'd like to do is just present a little table here. Now, you've seen these in your notes, right? So just a basic, basic table. The advantages, the benefits, and on the other side, the results from not understanding. And these are the benefits from understanding. So very simple. Understanding God becomes possible if we understand God's laws. Right? A relationship with God becomes possible. I gain an education about love. But I'm looking at love now from God's perspective rather than just from both sides now. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a song quote. I don't know if you look at love from both sides now, from give and take. What a heap of rubbish. <laughs> might, might be a nice song, but at the end of the day, it is very untrue. There's no, no need for give and take in God's definition of love. Right, and we'll find out of those things. So, so when you compare that, you can see that understanding God's loving laws, benefits of understanding, we can see that the disadvantages of not understanding are obviously the opposite as the advantages of understanding. So here we understand, understanding, gain an understanding of God. There we don't. Here we gain an understanding or a relationship with God. There we don't. Here we gain an education in love. There we just run around thinking we know about love and we don't really know much at all. Right? So you can see the contrast of what's happening if we don't discover more about God's laws. Now let's look at the next few. My redemption and transformation becomes possible. So obviously what's the opposite? My redemption and transformation not possible anymore if I don't find out about God's loving laws. I understand the causes of my current condition and pain. What's the opposite? I don't understand. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I'm in pain, but I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to fix it. Whereas a person who knows, knows what, ah, that pain associated with this problem, associated with that out of harmony with love. If I fix up the harmony with love, then I fix up that pain. I, get, I gain confidence in my ability to resolve, firstly, my own personal pain, but also confidence in my ability to assist the resolution of general pain and suffering in the world. See, many of us have had a, many of you have had a desire in the past, have you not, to help the world in some way. Right? Many of you have expressed that. But for the majority of us, we've got no idea how to do it. Isn't that not true too? The problem is so large, it seems, that, that we don't know what to do. But if we are no longer confused, we will know exactly what to do. And instead of our life being some aimless waste of 80 years, where we've involved just only in selfish personal pursuits and nothing else, our life becomes filled with meaning and purpose because now not only have we resolved or are attempting to resolve and currently resolving our own personal problems and issues, but now we have the capacity to help others do the same thing and also help globally people to do the same thing. So that removes lots of confusion, lots of pain and suffering. That's wonderful. Some more. I develop faith in God, God's goodness, and God's creations. Most of us are so scared of God. Scared of God, you know, being some punishing, wrathful, vengeful, angry father figure who belts the shit out of us, as we, as we say, right? For no reason whatsoever is the way we feel generally because we don't have any faith in God's goodness. And we don't have any faith in God's creations. We, we're scared to engage the world we live in. And we're scared to engage the universe we live in. We're so scared that we're completely blind, generally, to the fact that we live more than just living here on earth. That, that's why we're blind to our sleep state. That's why we're blind to life after death, generally. Because we're just so scared about... What's God's universe going to bring me next? What, what terrible things are going to happen to me next? 
And so what happens is when we get a little bit of comfort and a little bit of satisfaction, we find ourselves, you know, like holding on for dear life, you know. And you know that scratchy whiteboard thing, Bobby? You know, that's what it's like when we... It's not a whiteboard, it's a blackboard it happens with, right? And you're scratching here with the nails, you know, that feeling. That's how most of us are trying to just hold desperately on to the little tiny bit of happiness that we currently have. Right? And that's all happening because we don't have faith in this beautiful universe that God's created. Now, if we understand God's laws, we'll gain some faith in the universe. We'll gain some faith in how everything was created. Gain some faith in our potential to grow and change in that universe. And you gain an understanding of God's truth. Of course, all of God's laws are God's truth. So... So when we say, what is God's truth? Well, it's quite, quite easy. If we know what the law is, then that's the truth. So you know what the laws are. Remember, we raised in the second group, you know what some physical laws are, like the law of gravity, the law of aerodynamics. There are some physical laws. There's a mathematical formulas for most of these things. You can define them. We can rely on them. You, in fact, many of you, how many of you flew here from wherever? Australia or outside, so you know, twenty or thirty of you. You, you, you didn't, you didn't get in that plane. Hopefully not. Anyway, <laughs> where you go, I'm not going to make it. It's a chance, you know. It's just chance whether I make it or not. No, you got in the plane with some confidence, did you not? That you'd make it not only to Australia, but also make it back home, <laughs> right? So obviously, this is because God's laws are a large part of God's truth. Once you know the law, you know the truth. The truth can be relied upon. Beautiful. I can make decisions now. I can make decisions that affect my future knowing what the outcome will be. That's pretty powerful when you think about it. I now understand what makes myself and others happy. Now, the majority of us don't really have that understanding. Yeah, right? We, we sort of go, yeah, I don't know about this. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm not happy. A lot of times I'm not happy if I think about it. I don't really know what makes me happy, what doesn't make me happy. I'm not really sure what the relationship is between happiness and what I do and what I say and how I feel and all those things. I'm not really sure about any of that. But we have the potential to now discover those things. The potential to use our will positively to bring ourselves and other people happiness too. Because we know what makes we know what makes us happy, and we know what will make other people happy in the long run, too. Very powerful, isn't it? Obviously, the alternative is not understanding. Well, we've got the alternatives already, right? For most of us, don't understand, don't really feel that happy. Or, like I said, we're just holding on to a little skerrick of happiness that we currently have. Not not really doing much with that, aside from just. Desperately holding on to what we currently, what our current life is. And of course, that desperation of holding on eventually catches up with us, doesn't it? Because we get to 60, 70, 80, and then the very person that we had in our life next to us who we felt made us happy, she dies. Then what happens? Now, desperate unhappiness. And then we're holding on to life still because we don't know what happens after you die. And eventually what happens is we get sick and we get an illness and a disease. And for many of us, that's, uh, you know, the older we get, the more prone we are to that. And then, of course, we die. And at the time just before we die, for the majority of people, we are so petrified because we don't know what comes next. And for many of us, the only reason why we relax into death is because living is too hard. We're tired now. We're exhausted. We can't cope with any more. And we just feel like, well, even if there's nothing, oh, that's where I'll go. And that's so sad. But it's all because we don't understand so many things. All about God's laws, all about God's principles, all about what God has created as a part of this universe that God's made. So there we go, we've got our life governed only by the highest laws if we understand God's loving laws. Alternative is my life is governed by only the fundamental laws. 
I'm limited only by the fundamental laws. So this is like going back to the dark ages where you couldn't fly anymore. Right? Now, for the majority of us nowadays, we'd find that quite difficult, right, to go back to where we couldn't fly because a lot of you get in a plane, at least, you know, particularly in the Western world, many get in the plane once a year, twice a year, and for many they get in every week even. Imagine going back to where you couldn't do that anymore. Right? Imagine going back to where, you know, here in Australia it's really lovely because we get, we get our food, you know, from trees and stuff that are grown here, but then in the off-season we get a whole heap of food from other countries. But, but uh, only 150 years ago, most of that wasn't possible unless that food was heavily processed because there was no way to get it here in time for you to eat it. So even that's just an advantage, just simple advantages like that, where our life is no longer governed by some very fundamental things, but rather we have an expanded life experience. So I benefit from engaging the highest laws is, is one of the major advantages. Of course, we need to know what those laws are to benefit from them, but we can benefit from them. You imagine if, if we had, like, so we've got gravity that keeps us stuck to the ground, then we've got aerodynamics that allows us to fly. Imagine if we could just teleport. Where you go, I want to go and visit Michael. My, I haven't seen Michael for how long is it, Michael? Probably five years, four years, three years. Last time I was at the States, that's right. I haven't seen him since then. I just want to see Michael. We'd need to chat, so I have a chat. I go, teleport, bang, I'm in Michael's living room. We have a chat, teleport back home, sleep with my girl. <laughs> There's slight time delays in terms of time zone differences, so I might rock up at Michael's at three in the morning or something. <laughs> I have to time that. But wouldn't that be wonderful if you could do that? Now, this is what it is like with higher laws. Every time you engage a higher law, there's, there's more you can do. There's an expanded experience. It's more beautiful. It's, e it's a lot more easier. It's a lot more comfortable as well. Every time you can engage something in a higher law compared to a lower law. So, so it doesn't make sense to understand them? Of course it does. To discover them and understand them. So hopefully from that discussion, you've seen that we can actually, through this understanding of God's loving laws, we gain so many benefits that it's really worth our while to spend our time, our thought, our feeling the time to discover as much as we possibly can about those laws. So can you see why Mary and I have spent most of our life, 2,000 years, trying to discover more of God's laws? More of God's principles? You can see why, right? Because it brings advantages every single time. Now, I've given you these examples before, but just... The mobile phone, you know, the one that you've got now, many of you, you've got something like this in your pocket, right? It can take photographs. It can send information to other people, no matter where they are in the world. You can talk on it and actually hear the voice of another person, no matter where they are in the world. You can make mathematical calculations. You can have a GPS where you know exactly where you are in the world at any single time. Right Now, how many truth-based technologies did it require man to discover just to create that one device? Hundreds and hundreds of truths that needed to be discovered just to create this little device that we can utilise in our day-to-day -day life and makes our life experience, some could argue, more enjoyable. Yes? <laughs> Definitely more enjoyable. It's definitely more functional, isn't it? Whoops, now I've changed something on the phone. I don't know how phones work. But anyway, <laughs> Mary, that's Mary's phone. I'll just better <laughs> leave that. So, so what, what, just that one device, hundreds and hundreds of laws over many tens, decades of years had to be discovered to make that one device. But who would not argue that the one device has not enhanced your life in some way? Of course it has. Right? Now, if that's the case with a physical device, what do you think might be the case with devices that actually, or, or laws that actually govern your very soul?
the very the most powerful being in the universe don't you think there might be a whole lot of laws there a whole lot of things that govern that soul that can greatly expand your experience of course that makes sense doesn't it so that's why we want to have this discussion with you we want to discuss these matters with you because in the end everything we get to discuss with you is going to have some kind of positive benefit in your life and so we hope by the end of the week you'll be going wow if I engage that law, this might happen, that might happen, this will happen, that will happen. If I engage this principle, if I engage this principle, and we're only going through 16 principles. That's all we're doing. And there's literally hundreds of them. And we're only going to be doing 16. Right? So it got to the stage when we, myself and Mary were going through the principles, we're going... Yeah, you've got to get rid of that one. You've got to get rid of There's more important ones we've got to discuss, right, with you. And, and at the end of the day, we end up with the 16 we've got. And we're going, oh, there's still more that I'd really like to put in there. But, but in the end, they're probably the most important ones to discuss with, a, with us at this stage. You follow? So do not think that everything we're going to present to you this week is an exhaustive discussion on any single subject. In fact, it's not even going to be skimming the surface on any single subject, actually. In terms of the mountain of information that is available to us on these particular subjects, particularly if we connect to God and have that relationship with God. So, so we, want, we don't want you to get into this zone over the course of the week where you think, I've gone to the understanding of God's loving laws and I know everything about it now. <laughs> None of that, right? Because the reality is you'll be going the next 2,000 years, 5,000 years, and you still won't know everything about it. But you will, through that process, gain a lot of knowledge about the universe and God to your own benefit. <laughs> to your own benefit. Now, many of people on the world, in the world today choose ignorance, thinking, that ignorance is bliss. bliss. And I can assure you that when it comes to understanding God's loving laws, ignorance is not bliss. How many of you feel bliss? That's proof. Ignorance is not bliss. <laughs> Does that make sense? The beauty of understanding the laws is that's the road to bliss. Uh, so it's not ignorance that's bliss, it's actually understanding that causes bliss. Right? And so it's very important for your own happiness to discover these laws and then to do maybe something about acting in harmony with them, right? Which we'll talk about a little through the group as well. So that brings us to our conclusion. So during the week we'll be focusing on the principles, remember... We're spending time on these principles. We want to have a look at how they're applied in day-to-day -day life. But to be honest with you, when we went through the program, myself and Mary went through this program and we, we developed, you know, where we went and through the objectives and the, you know, the, what it reveals about God and the definition of the, of the things. And then we looked at all of that and I looked at how much time we had and we said, no, nah, we're not going to be able to cover any of that. So you know in your notes how you've got Definition, objective, what it reveals about God, what, what laws it affects, well, we're not going to discuss any of that because we just don't have time. You can ask questions about it if you want, and I'll try to answer those questions in the Q&As, but to be frank with you, with the basic principles, we're only going to be able to give you a brief summary and then give you a few examples so that you can see what those things mean. That's all we're going to be able to do. Does that make sense? So this is why it's going to need a lot of research on your part, a lot of reading on your part, because you need to have a look at the bits we've missed out as well. And can you see it's also why myself and Mary would be spending a bit of time in studio trying to go through some of the other parts that we miss out in this group.
So that's a good question, isn't it? Are we here to love or are we here to just talk about love? I see a lot of you talking about it, not a lot of doing about it. So we need to fix that if we're really going to grow a change. You got to question this will. And continually needing to say, raise the same issues about issues of love is an indication that your will is not engaged. So whenever I talk about with you about emotion, for example, that's an indication that your will is not engaged yet because all of you by now should have emotion down pat. You should know how to feel an emotion. You should know how to access an emotion. You should know its importance of doing it. You should not be putting it off. You should know all those things. It's been years that you've heard all that. The fact that you don't know that and you're still asking questions about it is what? An indication about this lack of will. Now, what I would like to do is in this group is inspire you to, to, to have a reason for using your will <laughs> in a more positive direction. Right. Because that lack of will is causing us difficulties in our life. Okay, so that's the end of our evening this evening, guys. We'd like to remind you to be early on time tomorrow morning, 10.30. 10.30. Tomorrow, um, the group will be talking about, well, the first talk we'll be having with you is about fundamental facts, about God, God's principles, God's laws, God's universe. And, and to be frank with you, we could spend the entire week on that first discussion. We could. So if you can come along well prepared and come along prepared with some questions, we hopefully will be able to you know, get some good questions from that and discuss those particular points with you. We'll also fix our sound issue so tomorrow it doesn't keep cutting out on you like it did tonight and uh, go back to our old system and uh, we'll have to dice our new system. We have to put out some antennas and a few other things to get that working. So we'll do that uh, overnight and in the morning so that we can be ready for having an uninterrupted sound with the uh, next presentation. Thanks for your time. Have a good night's sleep, guys, and we'll see you in the morning. Thank you.